أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بلاد brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين always and forever we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى نشهد ولا إله إلا الله we testify that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we send our love our greetings and salutations to beloved Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to his pious and his pure family his companions and all those who follow his sunnah until the end of time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Ameen. Walhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us opportunity upon opportunity to enter Jannah. There are those who sometimes we correctly, incorrectly assume Allah is looking for every technicality to put us in Jahannam. Whereas the truth is Allah is looking for every opportunity, one excuse to, to enter us into Jannah. And we know we should live a life that is good, consistently worshipping Him, but we fall short. And so, even if we've messed up the year, Allah gives us one month to fix it in Ramadan. And even if we lose the full benefit of Ramadan, Allah then gives us the last 10 nights to fix it. And even if we can't even do the best on the last 10 nights, then Allah has given us one night to fix everything. One night to fix a lifetime, not the month, not the year, but one night, khayru min alfi shahar, better than 83 years. One night. Allah has made it as simple and as easy as possible that the opportunity is there, we just have to take it. Tonight begins the hunt for Laylatul Qadr. From tonight, the 21st night of Ramadan, the beginning for that search of Laylatul Qadr. Now, everyone needs to push, every one of us needs to push ourselves to the next level, the next gear. Now that once Maghrib hits tonight, there must be a change in the way we're making ibadah. Remember, this is a race against yourself. You're not racing against the Hafid or whoever. If you have done good before in the middle of Ramadan, do a little bit more. If you haven't yet begun, Alhamdulillah, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, whoever ends, Allah judges you the way you end. So now is the time to get serious. The minute Maghrib comes, now is the time to get serious. And the best way to get serious or to motivate ourselves and that's why we are here today, inshallah, is to remind ourselves what is at stake in these next 10 days, these 10 nights. What are the virtues? What are the bonuses? What are the blessings Allah is giving out? You know, I always, uh, we think about those uh, Black Friday specials. When you know that there's this big, Friday, big Black Friday special, people are waking up, queuing outside because they know, I'm going to get an Xbox for free. I'm going to get a ticket for free. Well, this is what Allah is giving. And you decide how much effort you wish to put in. Remember, this is the holiest night of the year. There is no day, there is no surah dedicated specifically solely for a day. Yes, there is surah Jumu'ah, where only a verse or two is given to it. But two places in the Quran, two parts of the Quran, Allah dedicated about this night. Why? To remind us that this is a serious, serious night that is coming up. In Surah Dukhan at the beginning, and the entire chapter, Inna Anzalna Fi Laylatul Qadr, we all know that surah. And in fact, Allah says that, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْتُ Qadr. How will you understand how great, if Allah is saying, who is the greatest and the mightiest, He says, how can you really understand how big this night is? It is the biggest night, not of the year, but of my life, of your life. Laylatul Qadr can change the trajectory of your life. Not in only this world, but in the Akhirah. That's what's happening. Ten nights, ten nights to change your entire life. In that night, we know whoever stands in in salah with sincerity, with hope of Allah's forgiveness, hope for reward. You stand in tahajjud, qiyamul layl, whatever it is, even ishai, even witr, whatever it is, you just stand in salah. Nabi Sallallahu did not say what type of salah. Just stand in salah, even ishai, with sincere iman, and you it coincides with that night of Laylatul Qadr. Allah forgives every single sin, every single sin wipes it out completely and whoever achieves the reward of it so there is the forgiveness side and we make dua that is for everybody that everyone can leave the month of ramadan with zero sins to our name that's an eid to celebrate but then there's another aspect of laylatul qadr where the reward is a lifetime of reward better than a lifetime remember allah said better he didn't say it's like a thousand months it's better than a thousand months and for us to really understand this, we always say that if you were to make salah and fast and give charity for 83 years, that is the reward that you would get. Allah is giving that reward in one night. If you devoted 83 years in the masjid ittikaf, 83 years fighting jihad, and you just 
and the reward you would get for those 83 years, Allah, as a minimum, is going to give the one who achieves Laylatul Qadr. As a minimum. Why minimum? Because there is no maximum with Allah. That is what's going to happen. You can have the reward of a person who stood for 80 years in Salah, fasted for 80 years, recited Quran for 80 years. Just capture that one night in Ibadah. We know that it is the night where Allah says all the angels will congregate with Allah and they will get their decrees and then they will all come down to the dunya and they will visit. Why are they coming to the dunya? To visit the places of dhikr, visit the places of salah. Every single one of us, if our homes are alive with Quran, with, tarawih, with tahajjud, with whatever kind of good deeds, the angels will visit your house, will visit my house. One of the words, one of the meaning of Qadr, it means to be restricted, compressed, congested. Why? Because there are more angels on the dunya on that night than there are in the sama. This earth will be packed with angels. And for those very, very special masjids, places of salah, Jibreel himself will attend. Now Jibreel only came down to visit the Nabi Sallallahu to give the Quran. There is no more revelation. There is no more Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he is therefore looking for those places that are so sincere in their worship that he will come and visit, listen to your tilawah and make dua with you. This is not just for the, the awliya, but it's for those who have sincere love for Allah. Jibreel might be visiting my house. And so you don't know when he will come. And you don't want to be busy sleeping or even worse, watching something or even worse, doing some haram when he visits. You want to make sure that every second, every moment of these last 10 nights, it is in ibadah. We also know that it is, on, as Allah says in Surah Duhan, فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ أَمْرًا مِنْ عِنْدِنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا مُرْسِلِينَ Allah says, on this night, every, dis every distinct matter, every, every decree of Allah is going to become known. And how we explain this, Allah finalizes the budget for the year. Allah already knows what's going to happen, but He reveals it. He makes it known to the angels. These are your lists. Whose souls you're going to pull, O Malik al Maut? These are the people who are going to get rain. These are the people who's going to get a job promotion, who's going to get children. That is going to happen on that night. So the angels first meet Allah and they get their commandments for the year and then they come down to the dunya. And then Allah says in Surah, Rahmatam min Rabbika, as a mercy from your Lord, inna huwa Samiun Alim. He is the one who hears and knows. Why? Because when he makes this final stamp of approval, he gives you and me an opportunity to plead your case. What is it that you want? What are the problems in your life you want me to sort out? What are the things you're craving for? You want that job promotion? You want that child? You want to get married? Make dua and when I put it down as a decree, it will happen. Now someone might say, what is the point of dua if the decree is made? Perhaps the decree says, whoever makes dua, give him what he makes dua for. Perhaps that is the decree with Allah. Now if you know, and I want all of us to think about the things that are really difficult in our lives. Sickness, poverty, whatever concerns, frustrations. If you had Allah calling you and saying, what is it that you want so I can put it in your budget? That is what's coming up in one of these 10 nights. And then of course there is the salam, this peace from Allah. This general amnesty that no one, no one should lose out. That everyone should succeed. And so this is what's up for grabs. Between you and Jannah, 10 nights. Between you and me and success in our life, 10 nights. All it is is 10 nights. That's it. So how do we make the most and how do we hunt this, uh, this uh, uh, great reward? What, how can we focus our attention and our energy? I hope this introduction to it has given you the excitement. Before we move on, think about if this is your last Laylatul Qadr. Wallahi, think about if this is the last opportunity to change your life. If... Allah has put down that we would die, that with the angel of death, our name is on that list. It's very sad. But if you capture a little Qadr, Alhamdulillah, I've, my last 30, 40, 50, 60 years of sin is gone, and Allah has given me a lifetime of reward, my way to Jannah is secured. Alhamdulillah. Let us think about that. So when is Laylatul Qadr? We know that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam searched Allah in the Quran, says Laylatul Qadr is in the month of Ramadan. Allah didn't specify a time in Ramadan. But as a mercy, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he told us it will come in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. In the last 10 nights. And therefore, if you want to cover all your bases, make sure you are steadfast and worshipping and working hard from tonight, which is the 21st night, until basically the last night of Ramadan, until Eid. Every night, do good deeds. You will capture a little Qadr, inshaAllah. 
But if that 10 nights, if still you say, Ya Allah, of all these rewards, still 10 is a bit too much. Then the Nabi says, and fine, focus all your energy then in those five odd nights. The five odd nights. One of the reasons why, as a mercy, Allah did not tell us exactly when. Because think how disgraceful it is to Allah, to you and me, if we disrespectful to Allah. If we knew tonight was Laylatul Qadr and you still didn't make salah. One of the reasons Allah has given, okay, there is a, if maybe the excuse you make, he, he missed Laylatul Qadr, but the night before, the night after, he was a bit serious, inshallah. As we said, Allah is looking for every technicality to grant Jannah. So when is Laylatul Qadr? The first thing is like, if any of us have a big deadline, you have a wedding or meeting, you put a calendar on your fridge, right? Exam. That's the first thing we all do. So put this on your fridge or make a note. The last 10 nights begin from tonight, this evening, Maghrib time. And it will end, inshallah, Eid. You don't have to worry. The man kickers will tell you that. When are the odd nights? So the odd night is tonight, 21st night, the first one. The next one is Sunday night. Sunday night is the 23rd night. Then Tuesday night is the 25th night. And then, subhanAllah, I don't remember when last, the 27th. And the Yawmul Jumu'ah coincided. Next week, Thursday. Of all the nights that has been indicated as the one that appears year in, year out, that many of the awliya and the sahaba said the 27th night appears to be that special night. The 27th night will coincide with Yawmul Jumu'ah, Thursday night next week. And then, of course, don't forget the, th the, of one, the, uh, uh, the 29th night is, of course, Saturday, next week, Saturday. What's great also, if you look at this calendar, of the five odd nights, three of them, the next day is, is a holiday or weekend. There's a public holiday on Wednesday. So you can sleep a little later. Yeah, you can, and, and you know, the Nabi Sallallahu what did the hadith say when, what did he do when the odd nights came in? Now look, he's already making ibadah at that level. The Aisha says when the odd nights came in, he kept the night alive, meaning he didn't sleep now. This is the only time in the year that he just did not sleep because there's no time to sleep now. It's like someone going to Arafah and now taking a nap while he's on Arafah, sleeping. Now we laugh, but Laylatul Qadr is like that. Laylatul Qadr is like Arafah. And so you cannot sleep on that night. Obviously, that is the lowest thing. Sin is worse than that. But if you have to sleep, we have to sleep. But alhamdulillah, this year, Allah has allowed that three of the five nights, the next day is a holiday, so we can really push ourselves the night and rest in the morning. And if you really take leave, for example, next week, Friday, you take leave on Monday, you have all five nights you can really cover it. In fact, between the two, next week, Wednesday and Saturday, two days, most of us will take leave, inshallah. And then we can really push ourselves. So Allah has made it. Almost everything has fallen perfectly this year. With COVID being gone, Allah has put everything sort of in line. It's just for us to do our, our bit. Now also remember, the night starts at Maghrib, not after Isha'i. The night starts at Maghrib. And many of the uh, scholars have said, how sad it is that people lose Laylatul Qadr at the iftar table. Because they broke their fast and now they start talking and chatting and they commit sin. And that's, you spoiled, you spoiled the night already. So be focused from when you break your fast. Make sure that you are in that state of ibadah from Maghrib until Fajr. And remember that those nights, the whole night is sacred. But of course, if you really want to be specific, what is the holiest, holiest part of the night? It is the last third. So say from 2 o'clock, half past 2 until Fajr, that is the absolute holiest night. That is the holiest part of the night. So if you're going to wake, if you have to sleep, then maybe sleep before that and wake up in the or at a part of the last third of the night. If you can't stay up the entire last third, at least an hour before Fajr, two hours before Fajr, really focus on that. And remember, yeah, oh, oh, brothers and sisters, do not forget after the 27th of Ramadan, there is the 28th, 29th, 30th. Laylatul Qadr can be on an even night as well. Unlikely, but possible. And there's even an odd night after, Ramadan, after the 27th. Please do not lose your focus. Many masjids, they make a khatam and the khufa don't come in. No, subhanAllah. You don't want to lose at the last hurdle. As, the, as Imam Josie says, he says, even the horse, when he sees the finish line, he pushes himself. So be smarter than a horse. Be like the horse. When you see the finish line, push yourself harder. Push yourself harder. So at least we know when. And now schedule your time. You can say, look, let us... You know, that's why it's called fast food, food for the fast. You don't have to spend hours in the kitchen. Let's just, whatever is easiest, let's not distract ourselves with things unnecessarily. Make everything, you know, subhanAllah, when we wrote exams, we had all our comfort food ready because I need to focus now. That is the same thing. Everything must be in place so that I can focus. This is the priority. My Jannah is on the line. My Jannah is on the line here. Ten nights, ten nights, ya khwan, for Jannah. The next thing to focus on is du'a and dhikr. And perhaps the easiest type of worship is making du'a and dhikr. 
you can be laying down, you can be sitting. So if you are not sleeping, you should be making dua and dhikr. And that's why Aisha asked the Nabi Sallam, what dua should I make? Allahumma inna ka'fubun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna. If you can know, say the Arabic, very good. If you can't, say the English, oh Allah, you are the one who pardons, you love to pardon, so pardon all our sins. Every moment you are not engaged in salah or reciting Quran, you should be making this dhikr. You should be making this dua. Oh, alhamdulillah, astaghfirullah. That is sort of the minimum. Like the ulama would say, before you, you know, you made salah, now you go to the toilet, on your way to the toilet, you make Allah, and then you go to the toilet, you come out, you continue. Every second is, must be utilized now. Almost to say, who can maximize this dua? Who can get to Jannah just on this dua? And so it's very important when Allah is giving us the opportunity to give forward our input in his budget. What do you want? You need to know how to present your case. SubhanAllah, at work, I'm going through a budgeting cycle. There's meetings, oh Allah, the directors are all meeting, you need to present yourself. SubhanAllah, what is that? The, Rabbul, the Lord of the universe is putting my budget in place, my children's rizq and life and death in place, asking, what is it that you want? How do we make dua? We ask, now this is how we make dua. We begin by praising Allah, thanking Him, glorifying Him, testifying that He is one, mentioning His names, like Surah Fatiha, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Al praise be to the Creator, the Sustainer, the Lord. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, we praise Him, we thank Him. And then we express our dependency on Him. Ya Allah, You alone I worship. You alone I've turned to. Ya Allah, why have I woken up in the middle of the night? I left my sleep for whom, Ya Allah, for You and You alone. Only You can assist me. Only You can help me. Only You can guide me. So I've come to You, Ya Allah. That's how, you, that's how we speak to Allah. And then you complain, Ya Allah, You know this is the problem in my life. This is the thing that I need. Ya Allah, forgive me for my sins. Ya Allah, put barakah in my life. Ya Allah, save me from Jahannam. Now you ask. Now you ask and you implore and you beg. And if you can cry, Wallahi, those tears, those tears are, uh, 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 those things, Allah, Allah loves those tears so much. And of course, prioritize. Don't start with, I want that takis, Ya Allah, and I want that. Start with, Ya Allah, Jannah. Save me from Jahannam. Subhanallah, every night, we know that hadith, on every night Allah is proud, pleased, happy to give the angels a list. These are the people who I save from Jahannam. 20, 20 lists have come out. If our names were not on those lists, we need to make sure we're on the 10, the 10 that comes. One of those lists has to have our name, that Jahannam is haram for us. Ya Allah, accept Ya Allah. So now though you prioritize, save me from Jahannam, save me from the punishment of the Qabr, save me from standing before you with deeds that are inferior, insignificant, save me from a lifetime of mistakes and grant us Jannah. So you make those duas and then also don't be shy though to ask for the small things. Don't be shy to ask, Ya Allah, I have a problem here, a problem there, fix this, fix that. The Sahaba would ask if they lost a shoelace, they would say, Ya Allah, I need a shoelace, please Ya Allah, help me. Right, so it's good to strategize, make lists. Every family member in your life has something that they need. Some of them are going through school, some of them are going through marriage problems, some of them are going through sickness, whatever it is. Make time in these 10 nights to mention everyone, inshallah, by name. Try to do it and make a special dua for them. Why? Because then the angels make dua for you. The angels make dua for you as well. So make a list of duas of your loved ones. Make dua for the ummah the people of Palestine, and all the people. Make dua for the people, the ulama, the leadership as our community. Make dua for all of us. And then of course, always end with salawat. Send salawat on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember as I said, and we know from the hadith, nothing changes qadr like dua. So yes, Allah decrees, but He has also allowed you and me to make our case and Allah can change the qadr for us. Even your life can be extended through dua, through dua. And so as we said, the special, the, the dua that you should, there are special duas that you make for yourself. You know that. Speak to your Rabb, but alone time, in sujood if you can. So in tajud, you will, in sujood, make dua to Allah in your own language, no problem. Or outside of salah if you want to, no problem, inshallah. Or as you're laying in bed, make dua. And if you're not making formal dua, then just repeat this. Number yourself. See the goal. I want to make, subhanAllah, 10,000. Allahumma inna ka'foon tuhibul afu fa'fu anna. Set some goal and push yourself in doing that in the next 10 nights. Now, point number three, of course, the, the best way to worship. If you ask, what is the best, absolute best thing I can do to capture Laylatul Qadr is to make salah throughout these 10 nights. From Maghrib until Fajr, if you can stand the whole night in salah, that is the best thing. Now, that is not possible, or it is possible, and we're going to tell you how you can do it. Right? There's a shortcut to do that. So we know that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the best salah after the farad salah is the night prayer. And the night prayer is any salah at night, but specifically after Isha'i. 
So, Taraweeh is Qiyamul Layl. Now, amongst all the night prayers, the holiest one is Tahajjud. The one that happens in the last third of the night. The one that happens because the closer to Fajr, the more difficult, the, the later. So this is the most beautiful type of night prayer. And the Nabi said, you should pray Qiyamul Layl, for it was the custom of the righteous people for all times, since the beginning of time. Qiyamul Layl is the action of the awliya, and it brings you closer to your Lord, and it, pre it removes your sins, and it prevents you even from future sins. Listen to this hadith, subhanAllah. I, I only came across this hadith, uh, you know, when I did these slides. A man comes to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says, Ya Rasulullah, what do you think if I bear witness that there is no, I say my kalima, and I pray my five salahs, and I fast Ramadan, and I pray Qiyamul Layl only in Ramadan, and I give zakah. So I do the five pillars, but I do a little bit more Qiyam in Ramadan. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he who does this and he dies will get the reward of a Siddiq and a Shaheed. So if we can't pray throughout the year, these 10 nights, we have to make Qiyamul Layl. Now how do we make sure that I, I want to, Ya Allah, make if from tonight Maghrib until Fajr, I want to spend the entire night in Salah. How do I do that, Ya Allah? It's so difficult. Well, there are two shortcuts, two ways of doing it. Number one, the Nabi says, whoever makes Ishai in Jama'ah, he is written for him as if though the entire, half the night, six hours, was, was in Jama'ah. And whoever prays Fajr in Jama'ah, the other half. So make sure you in Jama'ah for Ishai and Fajr. In fact, many of the scholars have said, the greatest Qiyamul Layl is your Fard. And therefore, the best way to get the Fard on your scale is in Jama'ah. So make that effort that I'm going to come for Jama'ah for Fajr and Ishai. That's already the whole night written for you. Then... Whoever makes taraweeh with the imam, the Nabi says, whoever prays with the imam until he finishes the taraweeh, whether it's eight rakahs, whether it's 20, whether it's long, whether it's short, inshallah, the Nabi didn't specify, you stay with the jama'ah, the entire night is written for you in Qiyamul Layl. So whoever comes to the masjid, you almost have, for every night, you have two nights of Qiyamul Layl, just doing that. Then you still do your own Qiyamul Layl at home. Subhanallah, it's like you're covering all your bases. As I said, Allah is looking for one excuse to enter us into Jannah. And so, Make time for your own, make time to come to the masjid for Ishai, Taraweeh, and Fajr. And then, of course, make time for your own, your own ibadah at night. Make that extra effort an hour before Fajr as much as you can, as much as you can, as much as you can. The other thing that obviously unlocks your ibadah, unlocks your qadr, the two things that changes qadr is dua and charity. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi mentions that. The two things that changes your destiny, that prevents calamity, is dua and charity. And so part of doing a little bit more in these 10 nights, if you were charitable, alhamdulillah, most of us are very charitable. We follow that sunnah that we give more in Ramadan. We give our zakah in Ramadan. If you've given, give a little bit more, but every night. Now, subhanAllah, this requires that consistency. So make a specific time. Either when I come to the masjid, I'm going to give something to eat to whatever on the iftar table. I'm going to get a, a barakat together and I make sure a poor person gets it. So every night I can say, Ya Allah. And then you use it. You, you, not Allah doesn't know, but you tell Allah, Ya Allah, I made sure that someone was fed tonight. I acknowledge that, that this person was poor and in need and I gave him something. So Ya Allah, I am poor and in need. So please assist me, Ya Allah. Every night, every night give charity. Every night then use it in your dua or every day even. And then of course, there are other things besides feeding is the best form of charity. But there are other things, subhanAllah, being on your best manners, smiling, a good word, sending a message to someone that is good, your good character. That's also a form of ibadah. That's almost a form of ibadah. Okay? So charity is something which unlocks, it boosts your ibadah. The last point, and perhaps the most important point, the Nabi Sallam, when Ramadan came, he spent the first 10 nights in Ittikaf. And Jibreel said, not in these 10 nights. This is not when Laylat Qadr is. Then he spent the next 10 nights in Ittikaf. He said, not these 10 nights. And then he spent the last 10 nights. And then the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jibreel said to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is where it is. And then for the rest of his life, he would only make Ittikaf that last 10 nights. What is Ittikaf? Ittikaf is the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes to the masjid. He puts a tent up in the masjid and he just stayed in ibadah nonstop. Didn't sleep, didn't talk to anyone. It's just me and my Rabb. Now, if you can do that, excellent. If you can't, then at least be in the spirit of itikaf. I don't want to waste time. Every moment now, I don't know when my Jannah is coming. I need to be in the state of ibadah. And so, make sure that you're spending every moment in ibadah. And if you can't, the very least thing you should do is sleep. So if we're not making salah, or reciting Quran, or in dhikr, or in whatever dua, then take a nap and rest, or eat with basic essentials. 
But if that is, that's ideal. If you can't do that, at least now avoid sin. If Ramadan came and you still had some sins you were doing, chatting, looking, doing whatever haram, now is the time. At least these 10 nights, we're not going to do that. I haven't dressed properly. At least these 10 days and 10 nights, I'm not going to do that. Avoid sin. If you can't, so if you're avoiding sin, alhamdulillah, remember that Nabi Sallallahu mentioned the big problem for the fasting person, he's not going to commit zina, subhanAllah. He's not going to be drinking alcohol. But he might still be talking about this one and that one, backbiting this one and that, speaking ill. Don't waste time in un, you know, uh, unnecessary talking. Waste time in social media, subhanAllah. Now many of us, we check our Facebook. And you know as you check your Facebook, haram pictures pop up. It just happens all the time. Music pops up. Just put that away for now, subhanAllah. Put that away for the next 10 nights, inshaAllah. As uh, you know, I asked, uh, you know, what's, everyone's, what's on the mind of everyone? We said, oh, this year is going to be the first real Eid. We're going to meet each other. Yes, alhamdulillah, fantastic. Don't let Eid derail Ramadan. Don't let Eid shopping, Eid arguing, Eid preparations prevent you from Laylatul Qadr. So put that one side. And don't let our sisters especially, if you spend a lot of Ramadan in the kitchen, cooking, making food, stop now. Now is the opportunity to focus solely on your ibadah. Jannah in 10 days. Jannah in 10 nights, subhanAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the worlds, the most merciful, the most kind. Ya Allah, you are Ar-Rahman, you are Ar-Rahim. You are the most merciful of those who show mercy. It is to you that we depend on. It is to you that we submit. It is for you that we fast and we stand. It is to you that we cry and we beg. We need you, Ya Allah. Who can we turn to besides you, Ya Allah? Ya Allah, forgive all of our sins and all our mistakes. Our sins are great, but your mercy is greater. Ya Allah, forgive us and pardon us. Ya Allah, write for us of those who are saved in the month of Ramadan. Ya Allah, enter us into Jannat al Firdaus, Ya Allah. Enter us into Jannat al Firdaus. Let all of us enter Jannat al Firdaus and forgive our sins. Protect us from Jahannam and the Adab of the Qabr. Ya Allah, save us from the calamities of this dunya, of sickness, of poverty, of death. Ya Allah, turn us away from the fitan and the evil of this dunya. Ya Allah, grant shifa'a to those who are sick. Grant maghfirah for those who are dead. Ya Allah, have mercy of those in the qubur and into us, all of them, and us in Jannatul Firdaus. Wa sallallahu sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa sallin. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Just a uh, quick, quick announcements. Uh, our tarawih will continue. Half past nine is Qiyamul Layl. Those who like to contribute sadaqah to our huffad and the tarawih program, you can assist us, the Maharajan as well. And uh, we continue with our series. Jazakallah khair. Wa sallallahu sayyidina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh.